Self, such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker and members, today the House will vote on H.R. 184, the Protect Medical Innovation Act, which will finally repeal the medical device excise tax and eliminate a burden on patients and the companies that create and produce life-saving medical devices for people all over the world. The medical device industry is truly an American success story, directly employing more than 400,000 people. In Minnesota alone, more than 35,000 people are employed at almost 700 companies, mostly small companies that you've never heard of. Many of them were started by a doctor or an engineer or an entrepreneur in the garage or in the backyard with an idea to improve or imp uh, help save someone's life. In fact, 80% of all medical device companies have less than 50 employees and 93% have less than 500 employees. And these, the jobs they provide are good, rewarding jobs that pay above average salaries. And Mr. Speaker, America is a net exporter in medical devices. One of the other reasons why it's an American success story. But back in 2013, the Affordable Care Act imposed a new 2.3% excise tax on all medical devices. Now, 2.3% may not sound like much, but it wasn't a tax on profits, it was a tax on sales, on revenue. And usually the government puts an excise tax on things we want to discourage, like tobacco or alcohol or gas-guzzling automobiles. Now why would we want to discourage medical innovation? Only in Washington would you impose a tax on life-saving medical devices and then think you're going to help reduce health care costs. And guess what? The device tax caused the loss of over 29,000 jobs. Now, with strong bipartisan support, we've been able to eliminate this onerous tax with suspensions. The last time we suspended this tax, companies responded by hiring more engineers and more technicians and putting more money in research and development projects for these new life-saving technologies. But these innovators, they need certainty. They need predictability. And a permanent repeal is needed to especially help startup companies where the next generation of inventions and innovation will come from. Investors will hold back capital in new companies when there's a threat of an excise tax starting back up because it already takes eight to ten years, Mr. Speaker, for these companies to become profitable in the first place. This tax raises the bar and makes it even more difficult for them to become profitable in the first place. Now, I've had many, many uh, conversations with companies that I represent in my community and what, what this excise tax means to them. I remember having a conversation with a medium-sized company owner who said that without this tax, They'd be able to have a few more projects online, which meant they'd hire two more engineers and two more technicians. Other companies that I've spoken to said they'd be able to directly invest more in research and development, creating more high-paying jobs, invent better products, and ultimately, it's about helping more patients. Now, the good news, Mr. Speaker, is there's strong recognition that we need to eliminate this tax on a bipartisan basis because it's such bad policy. In fact, very few bills have such strong bipartisan support. 277 co-sponsors. 44 of those co-sponsors are Democrats across the aisle. I pledge that I will continue working with Senator Klobuchar in the Senate across the aisle and my colleagues to get this over the finish line because there are very few issues that would unite an Elizabeth Warren and a Ted Cruz. But this, Mr. Speaker, is one of them. And I would encourage all members to support this legislation. And I reserve the balance of my time. General Reserve, General Mesh.